Um, I next want to introduce you, and there's probably no need for introductions to most people here, um, to Mag Zamond, a retired second level teacher who discovered research is as much about learning method and the self as it is about the subject. And at times felt that there was an entanglement of all three. Um, and Mag is going to tell us her story using images, which was one of the calls that we did. And I think she was a very enthusiastic recipient for that particular call. Mags, um, if I hand over to you, it's entitled, It Takes All Kinds of Lemons, A Photo Journal, Story of Research Using Images. I think we're good to go. Is that is that legible, readable, seeable? Yes. Perfect. Oh, great. So look, it's, it's not really about the story of the research so much as the story of how I keep saying, I loved listening to Vivian there talking about, you know, lurching along from one stage to another. And as I do that, I tend to use, you know, clasp onto an image and use it as a metaphor for where I am, where I'm going, sort of a promise to myself that maybe I will, you know, eat that elephant eventually, chunk by chunk. So I have my, my pink lemonade. Um, ready Mary and I have my storybook um, Catherine. I'm Mags, I'm in my fifth year of PhD at the School of Education in Trinity and gosh it, it really goes fast very very it goes by very very quickly and um, my first image I, I've been holding on to this and I'm still holding on to it it's still working in, in, in my research is one that caught my attention it stopped me in my tracks dead in the University of Limerick in 2017, I was doing a summer statistics course. Um, thank you, Paul Conway, for that. And I stopped here and I was going to go down the steps and I did go down the steps for various reasons, but I stopped to take a picture of the desire line because these elephant paths, desire paths, they're, they're, they're just a thing that I am, am, am interested in. And I, I stopped at the end, took a photograph from, from the second um, view of it and I put it on Twitter just, thinking, you know, was this, was this in any way connected to, I, I'm, I'm researching Teach Meet, which is, you know, when teachers organize, we'd call it the Mojiruk in Irish, they organize their own um, get togethers, community of practice, CPD, personal learning networks. And I put it on Twitter and I wouldn't say 10 seconds had gone past when one of my smarter friends came back. I have a lot of smart friends, I'm a lucky person, with a, a remark saying, ah, we make the road by walking. So I did have a Carrie Bradshaw feel about this and I did a blog post and I sort of adopted the desire line as the metaphor for the topic I was studying. And this, the reason I say this picture stays with me is that it's actually emerging from the data, this idea of the Mojiruk, the, the, the desire line in, in, in educators' lives that Viv mentioned it, that des desire to be together, desire to form form links with each other. So that's the first the first of the images that, that I carry. It's not the most groovy of desire lines. And I just, I would love to talk to campus organizers and say, have a look at this and just see what the students actually wanted. The second one, the second picture I had to go looking for. So I went to Wikipedia Commons because one of my formative movies was Close Encounters of the Third Kind. And I felt, I, my biggest problem, and, and my beautiful supervisors talk about love in, and, and joy and trust in, in a PhD, I would say there was despair at times in, in Keith Johnston and, and Richard Millwood's minds, but I was going around in circles with literature review. Well, what was I going to do as methodology? You know, how was I going to, how was I going to research a phenomenon that, ha it was ethereal. It didn't have anything. Like it had a Wikipedia entry, a name, a logo. That was it. So I felt like Richard Dreyfus, you know, moving around the, the American countryside towards this devil's canyon, towards, towards what he knew was a thing. And I found the journey in, in the PhD wasn't linear. Just talking about desire lines, but the journey wasn't linear itself. It was circular. I found my methodologies in the literature I was reading about my topic. I found the sense making. I adopted sense making as 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 sort of the across the sky. There, there's a banner going sense making, and I found appreciative inquiry in in the in the in the literature I was reading about non hierarchical organisations. So I 
used the background of the, the Devil's Tower as, as a kind of a, a metaphor when I was trying to explain what I was doing, even though I still didn't know I, you know, how to explain what I what I was doing. Now I think I need a new metaphor out of this one. I think I need Richard Dreyfus going up into the alien ship to take off um, to show where I went with, with the um the analysis afterwards. But I do love this picture and um, free freely available from some lovely person called Colin Fockingham on, on Wikimedia Commons. I have got great comfort from, from this picture. And I did go back and look at the movie again, and it is as good as it ever was. So I'm, I'm really pleased with that mental model that sustained me through, uh, <laughs> through the desert. The next one is my own work. So this is, this is my pandemic blanket on the right. But I'll go to the left first because I did find great joy and learning in trying to make your tools fit the need in your research. And I was going to do interviews and I was going to do observation and I was going to do a questionnaire. So to learn to do the questionnaire really, really well, as Viv said, nothing about us without us, to include the community, to learn to do the interviews in a way that got to the lived experience of those who had volunteered to be interviewed by me. And if you look really carefully up in the top left hand photograph, I was knitting this at exactly the same time frame over seven, eight months that I did the design of the tools and carried out the, the interviews and did the, the analysis of them. And on the top left hand side, I had switched to a cotton yarn and I had no idea how unwieldy it was. And it snapped both the needles within a week. So I had to go find needles that could deal with cotton yarn. And that was around the same week that I was finding the ways through Qualtrics. Oh, Qualtrics is just fantastic. So you're, make your tools suit what you're trying to do and, and things will become more smooth. But the reason I have the picture, my show off picture of, of the blanket is that I was knitting that over the seven months of pandemic and IPA. And in interpretive, phenomenological analysis is a long iterative process. And I have a, there's a group we meet every Friday morning to talk about it. And when I was nearing the end of the blanket, they said, show us, show us your work. So I held up the blanket, but it was so heavy because there's a brown square. If you look really carefully, there's a brown square near the bottom that's hanging off the bed. That's the first square I knit. But by the time I finished the orange one beneath it, Everything was connected. So I was holding all 121 squares on my knee as I knitted. And one of the girls in my in my um, IPA group said, Mags, that is IPA. When you get to the end of the, the iterative analysis in IPA, you're still holding, you're doing your last interview analysis, but you're still holding the first one with you going through it. So I thank Claire for, for that um, metaphor and and... I tell you, I'm really glad I finished that blanket. It was heavy and IPA was heavy on me as well while I was doing it. I love it. But the, the analysis process, you were carrying 15 people with you all the time. So I'm, I've sort of put that metaphor aside. I'm finished with that, with that, that image. But it really, really, really helped me because I had to learn as I was going along as, as, as well. Now, the next one is there for fun. I used this photograph before. I used to use this photograph when I was trying to, I used it last year in a two minute um, presentation about IPA. And the, the little tramp on the right is my husband and our friend Ray, who's dead now, is, is the other tramp. But I'm looking at this picture on my living room wall for 34 years. This was taken in 1980. These two dudes are playing in, in Waiting for Bado and they won the All Ireland drama with it. It was a wonderful production. And I know Waiting for Bado inside out. So I look at these dudes all the time. And it was my, it was my mental model for IPA. When am I ever going to find something in this? And one day you do find it. So I put this aside as, as my metaphor for IPA. But now I, I'll finish with it. It's, this is my metaphor for my two poor supervisors who sit there and I would say at every meeting, they say, wonder will she come with something this week? Like, will there actually be a thing or are we still going around in circles? So just to let Estragon and Vladimir know, my beautiful Richard and Keith, one either side of me, we're nearly there. <laughs>
<laughs> the, 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 the findings are knitting together to, to, to draw out that metaphor really, really um, gracefully, I think. And we'll talk soon tomorrow. No, sorry, next week we'll have our, our next meeting on, on stage. And they're, they're, they're the, that's my picture album at the moment of walking my way, stumbling my way, machete cutting my way through the jungle of the PhD. And I, I'm, I'm quite moved by what Vivian said. So much of what he said resonates with me here. He talked about love. I would say put joy into it. I was working with a community you know, who loved what they were doing, a volunteer community, just, I, you know, I'm part of it. It's 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 a, an informal network. And I would say joy is one of the, the key um, things that, that we find in it. But mostly the, the thing that goes through all of this for me is trust. Find your supervisors, you know, work with them and communicate as, as well as you can. But, you know, trust, tr if, if you trust each other, you know, as a two sides of the one coin, the, the researcher learns to trust themselves. Like that's what's happened to me as an elder lemon type of researcher. So I'm kind of curious to know what everybody else's pictures are, but for now, they're mine. Thank you, Mary. Wow, thank you, Max. Wonderful and um, lovely images there.